am I wrong for telling my stepdad that I wasn't going to conceal my pads and panty liners? So I, 15 female, live with my mom and her husband. They got married about a year ago. My mom is a very conservative Christian woman, and she had a bad experience with my dad, so she kind of rushed into marriage, finally finding the perfect Christian man, a.k.a. my stepfather. Anyways, my stepfather moved in in early October and took over most things in the house. The kitchen, the living room, the office, the main bedroom, the master bedroom, etc. And they were all changed either partly or completely to his liking. I, of course, did not let my stepfather touch my room nor my designated bathroom, but he still uses my bathroom occasionally when my mom is taking too long in the master bath. Three days ago, my stepfather came to me with an issue, as he said. I usually keep my pads and daily liners out in the open. Not the nasty used ones, just the packaging. I keep them on the back of my toilet as I feel like it's the most convenient place for me, and I never really plan for other people to be using my bathroom. But my stepfather says that he's uncomfortable seeing my womanly products and asked if I would move them. I said no and argued that I wasn't going to make things inconvenient for me and said that he could use the guest bathroom. My stepfather said that he didn't want to use the guest bathroom because my bathroom is closer and that he's now my father and I should listen to what he says. What followed after was the classic rebellious teen versus stepdad altercation. I at first thought that I was completely in the right and after talking to a few male friends and my mother, I'm now considering otherwise. So, am I the a-hole here? Would I be the asshole for calling the police on my boyfriend after he let his brother and his family live in my holiday home without my permission? For context, I inherited a holiday home from my grandma some time ago. I never really use it as it's roughly a five-hour drive away from me. It's relevant to the story that the keys to the holiday home are on a rack, with literally every other key to anything my boyfriend and I own. The holiday house has a security system hooked up to my phone. When it detects someone on the property, cameras turn on and I can see them. My boyfriend's brother recently had his fourth child. Him and his wife currently live in a two-bedroom apartment. So three days ago, they were both over at mine and my boyfriend's house with all their kids. He was talking about anything and everything, and I was holding the baby. My boyfriend's brother eventually mentioned how I have my holiday home and how it's more than enough space for him and his wife to raise their four kids. My exact response was, yeah, but I'm not going to let you live there, so... And he went quiet after that, and his wife started to collect their kids and their things. They left about ten minutes later. My boyfriend hasn't said anything to me about the conversation, yet I'm feeling bad about my response because I know they really do need the space. So fast forward to yesterday. I wake up for work and realize my boyfriend isn't in bed with me. Nothing out of the ordinary as he works from 8.30 in the morning. When I'm finally about to walk out the door, I go to grab my keys and I notice that the keys to the holiday home are missing. I look around for them and I can't find them, so I call my boyfriend. First time, he doesn't answer. Second time, he doesn't answer. Third time, he finally answers. The conversation went like this. Hey, have you seen my other house's keys? He said, yes, I have them. I said, cool, why do you have them, though? He said, I grabbed them by accident. I'll return them when I get home from work. So I thought everything would be fine, and I continued with my day and went to work. Midday through the workday, I got a notification from the house's security system. I opened it, and I see my boyfriend, his brother, and his family all outside the door with a moving van in the back. I was fuming. When I got home, my boyfriend was already there, acting as if everything was normal. I started screaming at him, asking why the hell he moved his family into my house without my permission. He tried to justify it, saying that he had to help his family. It honestly made me even more angry. I told him that we're over, and he has one day to get his brother and his family out of my house or I'd call the police on all of them for trespassing. That all happened around six days ago. He hasn't called me or anything, but I fully intend to go through with my threat. The problem is that I know that they're struggling right now. So, I called the police a small while ago. About 30 minutes ago, they came and returned my keys and let me know that the family had been told to leave. At first, they refused, but eventually they packed their things up and left. My now ex-boyfriend, his brother, and his brother's wife have been blowing up my phone non-stop, asking why the hell I'd put them and their children through this. I blocked them all. I feel absolutely terrible about what I did, and I know that there was probably better ways to handle the situation. I even considered letting them stay after all, but I'm not sure if they would pay rent or anything. For the future, I plan to rent the home out, but now I'm not sure how my ex-boyfriend's family would take that.
Am I the asshole for wanting to give my nephew up to social services? So I, 32 female, understand that this may make me come off as a heartless bitch, but it is what it is. Not too long ago, my sister-in-law died in a car accident. My brother died years ago, so her death left my 12-year-old nephew orphaned. I've always maintained a child-free life for a number of reasons, mainly because I'm asexual, so I have no interest in having a family, and I'm autistic. I've never been good around children, and due to my autism, looking after myself has been a hassle enough, so I know that I'd make an awful parent and guardian especially when it comes to the emotional side of things. Ever since the accident, I've been looking after my nephew, and without exaggeration, it has been absolutely draining on me. My entire life and my routine have been derailed because of this, which I know isn't my nephew's fault, but it's been putting me under an immense amount of stress that I can't handle. The problem is that aside from myself, there's no one in our family who's able to take care of him. My parents are elderly and in their late 70s, so they can't look after him. Custody hasn't been fully sorted out yet, and if I was to decline my nephew, he would be placed into the foster system. I know it isn't great or the best outcome for him, but I'm deciding to give him over to the foster system. They'll be able to find people who can better care for him and who want to care for him, as bad as that sounds. I haven't told him my decision yet, but I have made my parents and friends aware, and while their reaction has been worse than I expected... Obviously, I didn't think that they would be okay with it, but my parents are threatening to end communication with me, and a lot of my friends are telling me that if I go through with this, that they'll distance themselves from me. Obviously, I'm aware that my nephew wants to stay with family, and that he could suffer from going into the foster system, but I can't take care of him in the way that he needs. I can't afford to take on the cost of getting a bigger apartment with a room for him, let alone bring him up or take care of him. I think it's best that others do it. They'll do a better job than I can. After reading what people have said about the foster care system, I'm looking into other options. I still don't think that I'm good enough to be responsible for him, but if worse comes to worse, I'll have to do that. I'd much rather take on the stress than hand him over to a system that is likely to take advantage of him and abuse him. That said, I've spoken to his best friend's parents today about the possibility of them taking him in, and they did seem to be willing to do it as far as I could tell. We're just going to talk about more of the particulars about it before deciding on anything. Even when everyone has said about this, I've changed my mind about the foster care system, but I still do think that I won't be able to care for him in the way that he deserves, but I'm willing to do it if no other options present themselves. Am I the asshole for telling my wife that she has no choice in the discipline of my children? My ex-wife and I parted shortly after the birth of my 9-year-old daughter. We also have a 12-year-old son together. It wasn't a messy breakup in the slightest. She just fell out of love, and we still maintain an incredible friendship today. Co-parenting with her is easy, and we have 50-50 custody with no courts involved. They spend a week with me and then a week with her, and we live close by anyways, and the kids love the arrangement. My ex-wife and I both agreed on the ways that we would raise and punish our children should they misbehave, and the way that we structured stays consistent, and we don't have one parent favored over the other. I've been dating a girl for around seven years now, and she's always been amazing to my kids. Last December, we got married, and things were fine until now. Last week, my daughter stole two pockets full of chocolate from a little corner store, whereas my ex would have marched her into the store, returned the chocolate to the owner, and apologized. My new wife took my children home, sat my daughter at the table, and forced her to eat the entire lot of chocolate by herself, making her brother watch. She continued to make my daughter eat even after she complained of a belly ache. My son told me when I got home from work, so I immediately confronted my wife, telling her that my ex and I both have a system in which to discipline our kids, and that she has absolutely no choice in that, and that if she's to punish the children, she goes by our agreed-upon methods. It keeps everything consistent, and I don't appreciate her making my daughter feel sick. My daughter ended up having to sleep for the rest of the night and even skip dinner because of her stomach ache. My wife is extremely upset and says that I can't expect her to be married to me and not have a say in how the kids are raised. I again repeated that how they're raised is up to me and my ex-wife and that she should respect and follow these methods. I got the silent treatment for a few days before she said that she couldn't handle the sight of me anymore and went to stay with her mother. Of course, her mother is now calling me an asshole and saying that I'm treating her as an unequal parental figure in the house and that she should have a say in how the kids are raised, considering that she's their stepmom. I spoke to my ex about it and she agrees with my stance and thanked me for standing up for our choices and defending our agreement. Things blew up quite dramatically in the last 20 hours and I've had the chance to have a talk with my kids about their treatment while I'm not home. As a lot of people suspected and warned me and what I feared, 
She's been using her own punishment tactics on my son whenever he misbehaves. This has included making him stand out in the sun on the concrete until she lets him go as a punishment for him jumping in the pool when he was told not to, ripping up his sketchbooks as punishment for drawing on his desk, and putting his hands in icy water as punishment for stealing an ice pot. My son only rang the alarm this time because it was his sister who was getting punished. So again, I confronted my wife, and she didn't seem to find a problem with her actions and claimed that it was all related to the behavior that he exhibited. Needless to say, I'm not happy, and my wife's gotta go.